All right, I'm Desmond Randolph, also known as Coach Dez, and this is my senior project basketball teaching excellence. I don't know what you're wondering. I get something so amazing like this turn into this. That's not Little Wayne, folks. That's me. Two years ago, and um, you know, it, it it took a transformation. It took a lot to change that to this, and to change from that, I had to use core values. And uh, core values are like the instruction manual to one's um, overall character. They define your overall character, you know, respect, integrity, responsibility, trust, and perseverance. And respect is treating someone the way you want to be treated as well as their personal belongings. And integrity is just being honest and telling others to do the same. <laughs> responsibility, taking care of what you're supposed to be doing. Trust, <laughs> demonstrating honor and reliability on a daily basis. And perseverance is never giving up, always giving 100%. And with these core values, I came up with this equation, you know, how do all of those added together, they don't equal that, you know. When you add them together, I got the five pillars of success, you know. I think of these as your phone signal. You can't have just one of these or your phone signal's going to be weak. You got to have all of them added together to have such a strong signal. And, you know, core values not only affect your own self, but they can also apply to your family. Um, this is my sister right here. She applied core values on and off the court and received a full ride basketball scholarship to Loyola University. And this is my uncle right here, Stephen Randolph, and he applied core values on and off the baseball field to receive a baseball scholarship to the University of Texas and then play in the major leagues. And here's some more examples. This is my cousin Michael. He played for San Diego State and went on to play overseas. And my other cousin Anthony, who did the same thing, but he played at the University of Ohio. Um, you know, it's not always a positive effect with these core values in sports. These are my two cousins. The one on the left, he was really good at football, but he didn't use his core values to help him excel with that. Um, he wasn't responsible at school. He wasn't respectful to his teachers. He wasn't honest. You know, he didn't. He just gave up and left high school and ended up in the jail system. And this is his little brother, who was also my cousin, and he's following in the same footsteps, not using his core values when he could have been doing something positive with his life, but. Now he's following down the wrong path. And taking what I knew from that, core values, sports, how they show a positive effect when you apply them together, we're presented with this idea about senior project. So I'm like, what is this? What, how is this going to help me? And Ms. Perry and Ms. Bailey were like, if we did this, complete this, we'll get an extra court and graduate more distinguished. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that, jump on a bandwagon with the rest of the kids. But not everybody stayed. Most of them dropped out. <laughs> like two weeks after we started. <laughs> and I wanted to come up with a good project, something that I could be remembered for within a community of Maynard, you know. First I started with a clothing drop, but we already got Goodwill, and there's clothing donations probably around every corner in front of corner stores, so that wasn't original. So I decided to go with something I knew, which was a basketball camp and a core value. I wanted to teach core values to these kids each day of the camp. So with that, I had to come up with an essential question. And an essential question, you can start off with one, but it can change. Just like when you're in college, if you pick a major, it can change the next week or the next month. And my first one was, how does basketball keep kids on the right track? But that ended up changing to, how does an extracurricular activity keep kids on the right track? And with the essential question, we had to do research. We found academic journals, one, which, one of which I found interesting was about the University of North Carolina. They had a basketball camp. But the camp instructors, they really treated the people that were good at basketball and not good at academics better than the kids that were good at academics and not basketball. And I used that as sort of to take notes to help me prepare. And I looked up case studies, one which showed uh, there was a positive correlation between participating in extracurricular activities and also excelling in the class. You know, you want to do good in class so you can participate in extracurricular activities and play sports. And with those two um, research with the journal and the study. I had to type a 10 page research paper, which took a whole trimester, my whole winter break. So I'm waking up after Christmas writing a research paper. I couldn't celebrate with my presence. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had to get two books to help me write this 10 page research paper because what high school is going to write a 10 page research paper? And one was just how to run a camp, you know, manual for running a camp. And the other was just a study on adolescents in Chicago, how they were doing bad in school, but they were still playing sports and participating in these activities after school. But the guy was like, that's not good, because it's kids that are doing good in school, and they get to play, and these kids are just cheating their way out of it just because the coaches like them. And I took that, got mentors, Mr. Odoms, 
and he helped me because in this area he's known for helping our kids with basketball and keeping them uh, out of trouble, you know, keeping them in the gym and on the football field he takes care of them. And I wanted to teach them all of this that I learned and add this idea of humble versus hungry, you know, no matter how good you are at a sport or an activity, there's always going to be somebody better than you. You can't get cocky and take anything for granted. So I wanted to teach the kids that. And, you know, with that, I wanted to learn about this community before I implemented my project, so I had to research about Maynard. And Maynard's growing very rapidly, as you can see in this picture. Maynard's a little girl, and that's Texas' his mama. <laughs> and um, since early 2004, it was at 1,500. Now it's on the rise. It, in uh, July 2009, it was between 4,000 and 3,500. And now it's at like 5,000. And with uh, more population, you need the need for more schools, but mainly focusing on elementary because Babies are born every day, so we got kids growing. We need more elementaries, and that's Shadow Glen Elementary. That's our biggest neighborhood. The elementary's coming soon. And with more people moving into Manor, we're going to need a larger economy. So we're bringing in a Walmart in early 2013, which is going to bring even more people. And also the Manor Express, which is going to increase traffic, and, I mean, decrease traffic and bring in more people in and out of Manor to move in and out. And you're probably wondering what this has to do with anything. Well, I, I came up with this idea that um, with population growth, it would lead to a better need for teaching these kids at an earlier age rather than wait until middle school and high school to teach them about core values. And, you know, why not teach it in a fun way with basketball camp, something they could remember and have fun at the same time. And as a quick fact, Maynard hasn't had a real basketball camp since I was coming out of eighth grade, and I was over at Maynard High School with the previous basketball coach. So why not bring a basketball camp to an elementary and then have Maynard New Tech be a sponsor in it? And this was my vision of a basketball camp. This is the Duke basketball camp. Obviously, I wouldn't have as many kids at one elementary. But this is what I wanted to do. But I was trying to figure out how should I do that and incorporate core values at the same time. And I was just stuck at a path. Where do I go from here? I was just feeling like Pac-Man hitting the wall. So I had to get help. I contacted Maynard ISD, which led me to Ms. Tamika Thomas, which is the director of the after school program. And she led me to Mr. Tommy Bookman, who runs the after school program at Blue Bonnet Trail Elementary, which stands for BTE. And with that, she helped me basically develop my overall plan for the whole project location, funding, supplies, um, the number of kids. I had to get all of that from Ms. Thomas, which led me to the ACE program. And the ACE program is the equivalent of extended care in AISD. It just gives these kids more opportunity for help, tutorials, mentors, after school activities, because most of these kids. Uh, can't just go home after school because their parents are at work, so they could just end up getting in trouble. So that's why the ACE program was created. And, you know, with the ACE program, I figured I couldn't do this by myself because there was no telling how many kids I was going to get, so I wanted to get some volunteers from my school, so I created a volunteer form that I could just sit in the office, people could come fill out, earn some community service hours. And I had to develop a unit plan, which is your overall guidelines for your whole program, like from beginning to end. And it just goes over um, when it will be implemented, how many students, what grade levels, how many lesson plans, field trips, um, awards. It goes over everything, teach. So I had to develop that. And I ended up, with well, first I wanted to do it during spring break, but honestly, what kid wants to come to school during spring break? So I had to change it to a five week program the week after spring break every Tuesday from three to four, which is right when the ACE program will start. And I ended up changing it from middle schoolers to fourth and fifth graders because uh, middle schoolers, they're already in basketball, so why not teach these kids earlier so they can be prepared to go to middle school and make their transition to maturity. And I had to develop a lesson plan right after the unit plan, which was a lesson plan for each of the individual days. And I had to make five of those, and it just went over with the whole lesson, what I would teach them that day, what I would need, how I would teach it to them, every type of instruction went into the lesson plan. And even after I had made all of that, I still felt I wouldn't be prepared for it, so I went ahead, took my iPad, made some notes how I would talk to these kids, because honestly, I didn't know how I would talk to these little elementary kids. I was kind of scared of them. <laughs> but this was just from the first day. Um, I just, I actually, yeah, every sentence, hi, I'm up there, I'm Coach Randolph, because I didn't say, hey, or be all slang to them. So, First day we went over trust and I, went, I made up this exercise where I would divide them into groups or partners and one kid would have the ball, he would close his eyes and his teammate would tell him where to go and how to shoot the ball. 
So it, the kid would have to trust them. So it was a trust building exercise and a team building exercise at the same time. And this is from the second day respect. It would, I just really let them shoot the ball that day, you know, so they could learn how to respect the game, respect each other, respect their teammates. Um, this is from the third day, it was responsibility. So I went ahead, you gotta be responsible with the ball on the court. So I let them do some dribbling drills around the court, races, games. Um, this is my video for integrity that I showed them at the beginning of the class. <laughs> Coach. Come on, Alex, direct and not call that. Got you kidding me, Alex? It's the championship game. Talk to him, coach. I touched it. They're both. Don't foul them when they inbound. Team 1-3. 1-2-3. That's one, Alex. Sorry, coach. Alex. Alex. Good call. Sportsmanship. Pass it on. talk to the kids. I mean, I told them honestly, how many times has that actually happened during a game? Never. They all replied, never. But I just wanted to show them some form of honesty with basketball. Um, this was the last day of perseverance. So I taught them about Jeremy Lin. For those who don't know, Jeremy Lin was a good basketball player in high school, but he still didn't receive a scholarship. So he went to Harvard University on academic scholarship, tried out for the team, played real good. Didn't receive any NBA looks, so he tried out for the D-League, made the D-League and officially, and then eventually made it to the NBA. So I just wanted to show them they should never give up on their dream, whether they don't receive something or not. And these are a couple pictures from the camp, um, shooting free throws, me talking to them at the beginning, at the end. We did reflections at the beginning and the end from the last week and what they learned today. There's some more pictures of them dribbling, shooting more free throws. That's my favorite right there, the jump shot. <laughs> and I, I had to instruct them sometimes because sometimes they'll mess up, but they still wouldn't get up, give up. So they persevered every day. I never saw them give up. And this is my highlight reel from all five days. 